Hello everyone. Ozone Day is celebrated every year on 16th September. This year the theme of Ozone Day is Ozone for Life, focusing on the positive outcomes of the Montreal Protocol in promoting and recovery of the ozone layer and addressing climate change. In this video, let us know about the ozone layer, its formation and depletion and the protective measures that we can adopt to prevent the depletion of the ozone layer. Why Ozone Day is celebrated on 16th September? Actually, on 16th September 1987 at Montreal, a city located in Canada, an international agreement was signed by 197 countries under the leadership of USA. This agreement is known as the Montreal Protocol. The protocol aims to protect the ozone layer by reducing the production and consumption of the ozone depleting substances. Now let us know what is the ozone layer and why it is important for us. The earth atmosphere is made up of several layers, each with its own characteristic temperature and pressure. These are troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere and thermosphere. A further region at about 500 km above the Earth's surface is called the exosphere. Now, the troposphere is the lowest part of the atmosphere that spreads up to 10 km from Earth's surface. This is the part where we are living. It contains most of our weather, cloud, rain, snow, and troposphere contains about 75% of all the air in the atmosphere and almost all the water vapors that forms cloud and rain. The next one is the stratosphere. This region extends up to 50 km from the troposphere. It contains much of the ozone gas in the atmosphere. This region is very much important in our discussion. The next is the mesosphere. It is above the stratosphere and is extended up to 80 km. The temperature in this region gradually decreases with height, reaching a minimum of about minus 90 degree centigrade. Then comes the thermosphere, which lies in the region of 80 to 700 km, where temperature increases with height. This temperature increase is caused by the absorption of energetic ultraviolet and X-ray radiation from the sun. The region above about 700 km is called exosphere. Actually, in the stratospheric region, from 12 to 30 km, there exists a layer of ozone gas which is called the ozone layer. Now let us understand what is ozone. Ozone is actually a form of oxygen in which three oxygen atoms are combined together and exist in the gaseous state. This layer of ozone gas is also known as the nature's sunscreen as it is acting as a shield or screen that protect us from the harmful ultraviolet ray coming from the sun. Now let us try to understand how this ozone gases in this layer is formed. The ozone layer is formed naturally in the stratosphere where ultraviolet radiation from the sun interacts with oxygen molecules. It is actually a two-step process. In the first step, the ultraviolet light coming with sunlight breaks apart an oxygen molecule into two oxygen atoms. Then, in the second step, each oxygen atom binds with another oxygen molecule to form an ozone molecule. This way, ozone gas is formed in this region of the atmosphere. This layer of ozone gas is protecting us from the harmful UV light because the UV light is actually trapped by the oxygen molecules while formation of the ozone layer and consequently it is acting as a filter or you can say it as a screen that prevents us from the UV ray that is coming to the earth's surface along with sunlight. The UV rays are very very harmful for us as it can cause skin cancer, genetic damage and immune system suppression, harmful for plant and animal life, harmful for agricultural crops and the ozone layer is also keep the temperature of the earth moderate. 
At this stage, everyone may raise a question that why ozone gas exists in the stratosphere only. Actually, the Mother Earth has set up this universe in a very systematic way. For the formation of ozone gas, we need a favorable or optimum condition of temperature and pressure which is available in the stratosphere only. But unfortunately, due to industrial revolution, increase in number of automobiles and various other man-made activities, this ozone layer is gradually getting depleted day by day. There are many chemical compounds which contribute to the ozone layer depletion which are also called ozone depleting substances or in short ODS. ODS includes chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs, halons, carbon tetrachloride, methyl chloroform, hydrocarbons and also methyl bromide. Now let us discuss how these chemicals deplete the ozone layer. I am giving two examples. First one is the chlorofluorocarbons. Refrigerators and air conditioners, aircrafts, fire extinguishers, aerosol sprays commonly use chlorofluorocarbons as coolants in these appliances. These CFCs are very stable and being lighter than air, when released in atmosphere, they escape into the stratosphere. In the ozone layer, the CFCs absorb UV light and breaks into highly reactive chlorine atoms. These chlorine atoms then carry out a chain reaction where the ozone molecules react with chlorine atoms to form oxygen molecules and the chain reaction continues to form more oxygen molecules and reactive chlorine atoms. In the second case, Oxides of nitrogen, mainly nitric oxide and nitrous oxide, are responsible for the depletion of the ozone layer. The nitric oxide released from supersonic fly planes react very rapidly with ozone and deplete it. Similarly, nitrous oxide released from burning of fossil fuels, decomposition of manure, etc. react with ozone and also deplete it. This depletion in the ozone layer leads to the formation of ozone hole. Ozone hole means the area or region where the density or the concentration of ozone is decreasing day by day. The ozone hole was first noticed in 1985 by British scientist Joe Farman, Brian Gardiner and Jonathan Shanklin at the Antarctic region. They reported a large and unexpected decrease in ozone levels over Antarctic region. The largest ozone holes on record were noticed in the year 2000 and 2006, measuring over three and a half times of the size of Australia. Now, what can we do to prevent this ozone layer depletion? While the vast majority of ODS uses is either industrial or commercial, as an individual, we can help in the following ways. We have to avoid the use of ozone depleting substances that is ODS as far as possible. We can conduct regular inspection and maintenance of air conditioning and refrigeration appliances to prevent and minimize refrigerant leakage. For the existing air conditioning and refrigeration appliances that operate on chlorofluorocarbon or hydrochlorofluorocarbons, the refrigerants should be recovered or recycled. When motor vehicle air conditioners need servicing, we make sure that the refrigerants are properly recovered and recycled instead of being vented to the atmosphere. The nitrous oxide is also produced when manure decomposes making poultry, beef, pig and dairy farms large producers of this gas. So, people should be encouraged to eat less meat and meat products. The automobile engines should be regularly checked and maintained. At the end of this video, I want to say that on the occasion of World Ozone Day, let us make a promise to preserve the ozone layer and also to create an awareness about preservation of the ozone layer. Please share this video. Thanks for watching.